Hey guys, it's Yankee Prepper, and today I'm going to show you my recipe for dehydrated deer stew. Very basic recipe. I'm just going to go through the steps with you to show you how I put it together. And you can use this base recipe for other soups and stews that you can expand upon and, and make your own. Soups and stews are a personal favorite of mine to bring into the field. There's a certain comfort level to those kinds of foods, but they provide a lot of energy, you know, especially on those cooler days. They're hot foods for long, hard days of work. But I think the real reason that I'm putting this vid up is because it is a perfect example of how a prepping lifestyle or living a prepping lifestyle works. You see, the same skills that I'm using here in my everyday life, whether it's hunting or fishing, camping with my family, out in the field, are the same skills that I'm going to need in an emergency, either short term or long term. The very same preparations that I purchase and invest in as an insurance policy in case there's a short-term or long-term emergency are the same preparations and skills that I use in real life. I'm not just buying food and buying supplies to put on a shelf to make vids about. I'm actually using those supplies, using that food. My food, all my food is on a year rotation basis and I use it in my real life. The same stuff that I would use in an emergency. So enjoy the vid, but no, that's the example I'm, I'm trying to set here, and that's the difference in a prepping lifestyle. At the end of the vid, probably the last five minutes, I actually show cooking the meal in the field and some hunting shots of uh, where I went with it. So enjoy. This is a couple pounds of venison that I have mixed about 20% with beef. I prefer beef over pork. Get a big cast iron skillet hot. I spread it out on a thin, even layer across the uh, cast iron pan and let it thoroughly brown on one side. I won't turn it over until the moisture has boiled off. In the meantime, I'll just keep chopping it up into finer pieces. When cooking any meat in anticipation for dehydration, you would always cook it longer than you usually would. In fact, right before the burning stage is perfect. And you can kind of tell by the sound. It starts sounding pretty crispy. And this is ready. It's brown just right. And I take a pint of water, mix it in. This will help leach out any remaining fats. Then drain your meat. I saved the broth rather than throw it away because let's face it there's a lot of good flavor in there a lot of good stuff. I save it for the dog at least. Uh oh. The bat phone. Rinse it thoroughly with hot water then let it drain in the sink. Two pounds can be spread out pretty evenly over three trays. I'm going to take these down to the dehydrator. Put it on the setting for dehydrating meat, which is usually the highest setting in the dehydrator. And I'll leave this for a couple days. After a couple days in the dehydrator, it will literally feel like rocks. There will be no moisture involved in the deer meat. And that's what you want. You don't want there to be any moisture when you go to pack this away. The only way I've figured out how to do this without making a mess is to put a sheet of tin foil out and then slide the deer meat or whatever you're drying onto the tin foil. The holes in the middle don't make it easy. Out of about two pounds of deer meat, I usually get about eight ounces of dried meat. And then I'll split that up into two packs. Two pounds of deer meat, 
in two four ounce packages. I do buy food in bulk. It just makes sense for my family financially. I save a lot of money by purchasing food in bulk. I buy dehydrated food in bulk as well when it makes sense. And I use different sources that I cherry pick for that. Sam's Club, Costco are excellent places to save money by buying food in bulk. LDS Cannery is another one. But I also make my own dehydrated food. It helps save me money as well. If there's something that's getting kind of old, a vegetable in the refrigerator, I dehydrate it. It saves me money. Nothing goes to waste. None of this is just going to sit on the shelf and expire. It's all being rotated through. I know how to use it. I know how to cook with it. I know how it works. Most vegetables will dehydrate fairly quick and easy at home. Uh, a lot of times I'll have you know a stalk of celery in there that's just starting to go bad. It's one of the things my chickens won't eat, so I'll chop it up and dehydrate it and just save it for you know hunting and camping trips. Uh, put it in the freezer; it'll last for years. Uh, this is an entire stalk, like the entire plant of celery, in one small package, and this is a serving for four people of peas. So. Doing it yourself is really cost effective and you can bring it down, all of this dehydrating, in fact, you can bring it down into a very lightweight package. I have found best to keep things separate uh, in most recipes. Keep your meat in a separate package, keep your vegetables in a separate package, with the exception of potatoes, because they kind of cook differently than the rest of the ingredients. Mashed potatoes, a half a cup. Two servings. Half a cup of carrots. Quarter cup of onions. Three tablespoons of celery. Two tablespoons of peas. I'll take at least a heaping teaspoon of Italian herbs. That's up to you. That's your taste. You can put some Tony Chacherets in there or whatever you prefer. Throw in a handful of dehydrated mushrooms. Maybe two handfuls. Now a lot of times I'll splurge and take some uh, fresh garlic along with me because it doesn't weigh anything. But in this case I'm going to just put some garlic powder in. A quarter teaspoon of garlic powder equals about one clove so Put in what you think you want. Then we'll seal these up. You know, another little tip for you, always leave your bags bigger than what you need because you can actually boil inside of these and a lot of times I do that. Sometimes I'll put them in the cook pot, but other times I don't want to mess with it and I'll just actually rehydrate these in the bags themselves. So leave some room. big bag to put all your parts into. You have quite a few options for the base or the uh, broth for this meal. Um, you, you know you can personalize this obviously and don't be afraid to experiment with it. You can really make, you know, tune this into what you like. By putting in three or four bullion cubes right now, you could be done with this meal. That has an infinite shelf life. Uh, another quick method for putting in flavor to some of these dehydrated meals is using gravy packs, like this homestyle gravy mix. That's a four serving pack. I could throw that in there and that would work as well. If you just want a thick base, you could throw in a couple tablespoons of cornstarch. These little uh, pill packs, Ziploc pill packs, work great for putting in small uh, ingredients like that. But for this meal, I'm making it up actually going on a trip this morning, and uh, I'll be using it in the next couple days. I'm going to use a Tones beef base. Now, I really like these, uh, these bullion uh, bases, both chicken and beef. I prefer them. The downside to them is that once you open them, you have to keep them in the refrigerator or keep them cool. They don't have an infinite uh, shelf life, but they're really flavorful and tasty. I use them in all the meals that I can, especially on a trip like this where I'm going to be using them in the next three or four days. It'll be fine. This is a hot pepper that I grew and picked out of my garden and then dehydrated a couple years ago. I keep them in storage for when I need them and I'll stick that in the pack as well.
pack of Grey Poupon, pack of ketchup or a couple packs of ketchup, stick that in there. That'll add a little flavor. Experiment. Okay, seal her up. Here we go. We're ready. All we gotta do is take it out to the field and eat it. This is beautiful, isn't it? Get him, buddy. Get him, get him, get him. Go get him. Go get him. They were sitting right here. Deer meat in, and then our bullion. Put those mushrooms in there. Oh, he's tired. Tired from chasing grouse. Add a little oil. Mustard. Okay, I, chop. I don't think they're really going to do anything but thicken this stew up and add a little flavor. A little more sustenance. Those potatoes make a nice great. Check that out. Nice, huh? 
Oh yeah. What did he eat? How's that? I'm gonna go sit out on the broken bridge. Yeah. On our deck. Yeah, sit out on our deck. God bless. Mmm. Not a bad place to have dinner. Nope. Pretty good view. Pretty good view. It's too bad I forgot that whiskey. <laughs>